Good evening. We're going to go ahead and call to order tonight's regular school board meeting of September 10th, 2018. If you could rise for a moment of silence, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you very much. Um, board members, at this time, do we have any changes, amendments, additions, or deletions to the agenda? Okay, seeing none, uh, we are at approval of the minute. Superintendent? There weren't any changes to the agenda, but I will call your attention to item 8.05, which was amended to add some additional language to include the budget amendment that um, was to correspond with that. So that's in front of you. Also in front of you is the uh, annual financial report. It was not in board doc, so just two additional items, but no changes to the agenda itself. At this time, I will recommend approval of the minutes from the school board meeting dated August 20th, 2018. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Oh, Aye. I guess Aye. I should ask for discussion first. I'm so sorry. I don't usually do that for minutes, but any discussion? All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. All right, uh, we are at our public input section, and I have a request from Mrs. Stevens to begin for us. Yes? <laughs> are you ready? Yes, ma'am. You're welcome. <laughs> and as they're coming, I'll just um, preempt, as Ms. Stevens and I had a chance to talk, um, as you know, you received some emails about Accelerated Reader, and the, the schools have a choice as to whether or not they're going to continue that or not, and her school has opted to keep the program. Um, we I did verify that. And so they will have Accelerated Reader next year, which is what they're here to talk about. And I just think it's exciting because Isabella is here to talk about. Um, she is an amazing young lady who has, um, she won, she had the most points in Accelerated Reader last year, and she loves to read. And so I, we're excited tonight to meet her and hear all about her love for reading. All right. Um, basically, um, good evening, um, Superintendent Cornegay and Stephanie and board. And I want to congratulate you and Bill on your recent election. Congratulations. Um, we're here tonight basically from Seminole Springs to beg you all to keep AR in our public schools. We were told it was going away. It was an old school program. Mark Twain once said, sail away from the safe harbor, catch the trade winds in your sails, explore, dream, and discover. With AR, our children have a mountain of hope at their disposal. They share stories with one another, encourage and collaborate. Please visit our school. Please visit our school and share in their joy. Emily Dickinson said, a word is dead when it is said, some say. I say it just begins to live that day. This is so true as children learn robust vocabulary, pulling meanings from context clues. AR allows them to excel. Without AR testing, a child could simply hop to the library, check out a book, after, and another book, and another book, and just turn the pages. As a teacher, I want them to find an author or a topic they love. However, it is just as important that they select a book that they can comprehend. Last year, my colleagues here had 75% that were in the red zone. Many of these children would not have passed without our AR parties. The community pitched in to reward children based on their reading goal set by our librarian. No grades, just sheer enjoyment. Oakwood, Publix, China Express, Subway, Olive Garden helped them have a special celebration, balloons, prizes, and delicious meal. We started small, but by the end, 95% were engaged in reading. Some children require special incentives to catch the reading bug. As we search for metaphors and similes and personification, let me leave you with, a vivid, with, a, with my vivid imagery from White Oleander. Hope slipped through her fingers like fish juice. That is exactly what will happen to our children. Keep the hope alive, allow them to explore, dream, and discover. For only $10 a child per year, it is the best bang for your buck. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Stevens. Um, would Isabel like to go next? Mm -mm. <laughs> Hi there. Hello. 
Hey, Isabel, can you reach up there and grab that and maybe pull it down? Is that... Good evening. My name is Isabel Arana. I'm here to talk today to talk about AR. I think that AR should stay because AR is super important to me. I think it is fun and educational at the same time. Not everyone likes the same type of books. How? We can tell what books they like by seeing what types of books they take on AR, t take AR tests on. Sorry, we have to get the next part of my speech. I also think that when I'm taking a test, I get to know the book better than before. Books mean the world to me. People notice that by the points I have. I motivate other children to achieve their goals, and this is why I want to keep AR. Thank you very much. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you too. <laughs> and I have Lorena. <laughs> Hard act to follow. Um, I'm also a teacher at Seminole Springs Elementary and as a teacher I see the kids get excited about reading even my own child testing their comprehension and knowledge of the stories they read and tracking their points it excites the children to see their points accumulate and reach their goal the children find it fun and it gets them interested in reading more books and discovering books of interest and gaining new knowledge. It's a wonderful program filled with incentives. The children love celebrating their reading success with each other and it makes them accountable for what they are reading. Thank you. Thank you very much. You didn't have any other incentives for that. Yeah, that's okay. okay, Mr. Klatt. Yeah. <laughs> Won't we all? <laughs> yeah, really. She did great. Um, seems somewhat, rep uh, first off, happy Rosh Hashanah. Um, teachers spent last Wednesday voting on the ratification of the new contract. Overall, teachers were pleased with the content of the contract, as shown by 9 out of 10 voting in favor of ratification. Uh, the LCEA's negotiating team and your negotiating team worked very hard utilizing a collaborative bargaining approach, resulting in a good compromise. So we thank you. Uh, also, I'd like to take the opportunity to congratulate Bill Mathias and Stephanie Luke on their re-election. Look forward to working with you on next year's contract. Um, and then on July 31st, we were joined from representatives from FEA and the AF of LCIO to train our building representatives on their roles and responsibilities in our schools on behalf of our members. FEA, along with the League of Women Voters, were successful in their legal action to remove Amendment 8 from the ballot this year. <laughs> this uh, was an amendment that called for limiting term limits for school board members, but basically its real purpose was to remove local control from the oversight and approval of charter schools. Our lawsuits on the best and the brightest are continuing, as well as our lawsuit on the ill-conceived union decertification bill, which targets only teacher unions. So I just wanted to bring you up to date. Thank you all very much, and talk later. Thank you, Mr. Clapp. Ms. Cronin. Good evening, superintendent and board members. I don't think I remember having two contracts on one agenda to be approved, but SEIU's is 9.7. And, you know, we tentatively agreed to this contract before school got out and didn't have a chance to vote on it. We had to wait for employees to come back. So employees are anxiously waiting. Um, the ratification vote was 100, uh, nine, 894 yes votes to six no votes, so it was overwhelmingly approved. Um, we've already started making a list for what we want to discuss next year. Um, and with that being said, I want to also just, it's, it's been several years that we went to the bargaining table with your, with your team um, where we felt comfortable and not bullied. Um, so, you know, our team was very happy with what went on this year. You know, it's, it's even to the point where we can call payroll and not get chewed out. 
and it's a good change. Thank you. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you. All right. We are on the Educational Foundation report, so we invite up Ms. Carmen Cullen back. Is that all the public? Mm -hmm. Chairman, board members, uh, superintendent. Uh, the Educational Foundation Apple Mart stores opened four weeks ago, and we have served 137 teachers, and that would have been a distribution of over $10,000 in supplies. Um, we had 300, or excuse me, 3,024 students qualified to receive backpacks and school supplies, and that uh, totaled $166,000. On August 8th and 9th, we distributed $87,500 of complimentary Disney tickets to our school bus drivers, and least to say, they were very excited. Um, the board allocated $50,000 in grant funding for CTE programs in our middle and high schools. Um, we had a call for grants, and we had 15 reply. Uh, they total $80,000, so our visioning committee is going to be meeting this week to review them, uh, rank them, and then recommend them to the full board for funding. We also um, have sent out the Duke regranting grant. Uh, there's $28,000 for STEM grants, um, and those um, deadline on October the 18th. Um, the Tech Stock and Children's Spelling Bee is this Thursday. Um, this is the fun corporate spelling bee, and we have 32 teams competing, which is the most teams that we've ever had, so we're real excited about that. Um, we've already started off the year with Lake County hitting the, the face of the state with an award. Uh, the foundation has um, had a high school high tech program for the past four years, and it's currently last year and this year is at Eastridge. And the instructor for that program, Ms. Uh, Nicole Marconi, um, received the high school high tech 2018. Uh, Youth Development and Leadership Award. So for this, it's great for Lake County. The Scott Strong Golf Tournament is October 12th at Mission Inn, um, and we're close to a sellout on that. Uh, the Lady of the Lakes Renaissance Fair is November 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 10th, and 11th. Education Day being November 2nd. Um, students and chaperones are extended a $5 rate, and field trip information went out to the teachers today. And our next board meeting is September 26th at noon in the district office. Are there any questions? Board? No, oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Ma'am. All right. Um, do you want to do this one? Mr. Johnson? Okay. All right, Mr. Johnson. <laughs> Nothing. I don't have anything. You don't have anything. Well, that okay, good, perfect. Is that when you wanted them? Was that? So, so tonight we are starting a new portion of our agenda, and this is our school uh, highlight portion. Which um, tonight we're going to highlight the new STEM program over at Treadway. So they are our first spotlight, and we're pleased to have Ms. Christitas and her team here today. Um, we're gonna show a video, and then uh, we'll welcome them to share anything else that they'd like to, and just a chance for us to say congratulations and thank you for all your hard work that has, has led to this amazing opportunity for your kids, and we're very proud of you all. So Ms. Owens, thank you for putting this together, and now we will turn our spotlight on Treadway Elementary. Lake County School District is a place where our students are always learning and growing into the leaders of tomorrow. In this district spotlight, you will see how Treadway Elementary School is giving their students a hands-on, authentic learning experience with STEM. Fifth graders are recording data on local cloud formations and uploading their findings to NASA. They are becoming junior researchers for the cloud protocols and for a brand new protocol on contrails. Treadway is one of only four schools worldwide participating in this project. I taught at NASA for 13 years at NASA's Digital Learning Network, and one of the programs that we highlighted was the GLOBE program, which um, features a section called School. The uh, administration talked about is that fifth grade was having some problems with understanding things about the atmosphere, about climate, about weather. Um, the water cycle, and I thought this is the perfect program for kids to get involved with. Not only does it explain those topics, 
but the kids actually get immersed in it and it becomes reality to them. It's not just something, a topic that they're learning about. Um, it's not a model that they see. They are part of it and they're doing those observations. And the thing that I really like about it is the fact that they're doing real science. So they are practicing their skills of observation and inference and they are taking that information, they are uploading it as data, and they know that data is going to NASA scientists that are doing the research about the climate and about the weather, and so it becomes meaningful to them and they want to go do it. I want them to see themselves as scientists. I want them to see themselves in a position where they think science is cool, that it's relevant, and that they can actually see themselves in one of these careers. Um, the great thing about this particular program is that they are junior scientists, they are junior researchers, and so if they put themselves in that position now, then it makes that opportunity for that career a reality for them later on. So that's my hope for them. And, you know, infuse a little bit of NASA excitement within them as well. Not only are the students at Treadway Elementary learning to conduct research for NASA, they are also using their new STEM lab to learn valuable skills that could potentially prepare them for a future in a STEM-based career field. We wanted to give our students an opportunity to um, experience science, math, in areas that they normally would not have you know, that opportunity. We also want to be able to include all of our students. Everybody has a gift and we want to be able to expand on those gifts. Um, the STEM lab was developed so that all of our students would benefit from learning how to integrate their subjects into more of an engineering field, learning all the fields because there's jobs that they're going to be going to that haven't been invented yet and they're all geared towards STEM type jobs. My overall goal, goal is I want to see students have fun while they're learning and it gives everybody an opportunity to participate. Everybody's bringing a different perspective and they're working together and having fun learning. Um, at this time, we have third through fifth grade students rotating through our STEM lab. Um, all students will benefit. Uh, they're gonna be coming um, both in the spring and in the fall, and they'll be rotating through robotics, circuitry, software design, mechanics and structures, all kinds of things that are exciting ways to learn that children don't even know they're learning. We're also learning to take the software and the equipment that we have in the lab and to uh, redesign them to work with our younger grades so that all students in the whole school will benefit. Lake County Schools is the destination district for providing students with individual opportunities to excel. Stay tuned for the next district spotlight where we will continue shining a light on what makes Lake great. So, again, we're excited that our first feature was Treadway, and I don't know if there's anything you all would like to add, but thank you all for being here as part of our spotlight this evening. Yeah. I love it. That's a really nice, it's a nice new feature. So we appreciate all of you coming and your Game Changer t-shirts, and I appreciate mine. Um, I know that you guys saw from the video that Dr. Burns and I got to experience in Dr. Long's classroom. It, it was when we talk talk about authentic learning, it was at its best there. I, I know I learned just in the 35, 40 minutes that I was there, I learned something new. And then when I went home and told my own children what you were doing, they were like, what? Oh my gosh, we want to go to school there. <laughs> and I immediately went back to um, Umatilla Elementary School and met with their STEAM teacher, and he would love to come and take a look at what you're doing too. So we appreciate all of your work and your intensity and your engagement, Ms. Froman, your enthusiasm is contagious. And we just really look forward to seeing what Treadway does. So thank you ladies for coming. And, and Sherry, thank you for spotlighting that so well. What a, what a great project. So. Thank you very much. Thank you, Superintendent, for that vision. That was awesome. Um, we don't have any unfinished business, so we are at our consent agenda. I recommend approval of tonight's consent agenda items 8.01 to 10.01. So okay. moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Our first point of discussion would be the superintendent evaluation, Mr. Johnson. It went to the superintendent's contract and board policy. All of the board members completed a evaluation form in a format with the parameters that had been earlier approved by the board. Um, we 
were not able to do what we did last year, which was put each one of your initials on the document because of the formatting of the document. I won't mention who formatted it that way, but um, we, we, we couldn't get it done that so what we did was um, we put it on a sheet. Um, there are several pages of comments. What we did was we went back in for each of the standards and each of the performance areas and put all of the comments by all the board members in one place for each category. So there are the about eight-page first section of the evaluation form. And then I uh, put all of the scores on each standard and each performance area on the sheet. Uh, one says average by standards, the other one says average by objectives. If you want to see what any board member marked the superintendent for any particular item, it's, it's all on that chart. That chart ends up reflecting that the average for all of the standards the average scores for all of the standards, and that's 1.1 to 5.5, was 4.69. We're having lots of discussion down here while you're, <laughs> while you're speaking. It's not on board docs. It's not. Yeah, it's on board. We have it up right now. It's right here. Did it disappear? Yeah. It's a chart of numbers. 11.01? Discussion, 11.01. Okay, we have it. <laughs> Go forth and talk. Okay. <laughs> If you look at this page, you'll see that it has a bunch of numbers on it. And it's titled Average by Standards. And what that is is all five board members' scores in each subcategory of all the standards. Those are uh, end up being calculated as being a 4.69 average <coughs> score that the superintendent received on all of the standards. and. The next page is the average by board member, um, and that shows for the five standards what the average for each standard was for each board member, and those come out to be an average of 4.69, which means that I added all the numbers correctly. Um, the other section of the evaluation um, has a sheet that's called average by objectives under the um, parameters of the evaluation form, I was to calculate the average for each objective. Um, those are one through five, and those scores are on the right side there, 4.25, 5, 4.4, 4 and 4.0. And then the final was the average by board members for each objective, and those five numbers are listed on the sheet. Uh, I had Natalie, we brought uh, over all of your evaluation forms either copied or or reprinted in a couple of situations what I'd like you to do before you leave this evening if you don't mind would be to sign your just yours so that three years from now when we're trying to go back and compile which evaluation forms we use we have we have the correct ones for for tonight's day um, and with that that ends the evaluation superintendent for a year I guess any questions? Board members? Questions? Okay. We don't have any recommendations or motion. This is just. Is well, what we would, since the superintendent is not in a position to recommend, I would recommend that <laughs> you uh, approve the summary evaluation for the superintendent for the 17 18 school year. So moved. Second. Great. Any discussion? Right. I think it yeah. speaks for itself. Looks like it does. It does. Yes. You guys are so funny. I have good wait time, don't I? Did you feel pressure to speak at that moment in time? That's called three to five right. seconds. That's so right. I'm just making I know the sure very well. that we don't overlook anybody's time for making comments. So are we good? Yeah. All right. It does speak for itself. It does. And, and, and boy, every member of the public should go out and, and read this thing, and they'll understand the direction our district is moving. Well yes. done. Thank you all. Well done. Thank you. I agree. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. None opposed? Great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Johnson, for compiling all of those in, um, in a timely manner. A timely manner. Well, they were findable. We, have, we appreciate you. Um, we also are on final orders. Um, Mr. Johnson, this is yours as well. 
employees hearing? Yes, uh, 11.02, I guess it is, uh, is a final order on an, on an employee's hearing. Actually, it was two employees. They were consolidate. The, the recommended order was entered by the administrative law judge. The final order of the school board adopts the recommended order without raising issues on appeal. Um, so we'd recommend that you approve the school board final order in DOA cases 18-2309 and 18-2196. Okay, so moved. Second. I mean, we don't really have a choice, right? <laughs> Second. Okay. All right, discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Dr. Burns, did you say aye? I did. Okay, <laughs> I didn't see you. Thank you for clarifying. All right, we are on um, the superintendent's report. Um, go ahead, superintendent, you go ahead. I just have a couple of thank yous. First of all, thank you to you, board, um, for the opportunity to, to Lee Lake. Um, I am just tremendously blessed to, to do so and to be a part of this tremendous team. So I just wanted to say thank you all. I also want to say thank you to the voters at Lake County who stepped out to support our children. And the passing of the referendum is critical to ensuring the safety of our children and expanding our mental health services. Uh, so I'm Again, also very proud of this community and for their love and support of our kids, and I'm honored to be a part of it. Um, thank you all to all the students who have been in school on time as we celebrate Attendance Awareness Month throughout September. Uh, look for more videos and social media highlights over the next couple of weeks, and thank our teachers and support personnel who are making this time a fun time, but yet a very meaningful time as we um, celebrate kids coming to school and the importance of being in school every day. So I um, also want to congratulate Leesburg High School student Lane Davis. We'll be traveling to Washington, D.C. to speak to Congress about the importance of career and technical education programs. We, we know that that is a key focus here in Lake as we expand those programs. And so he's going to be a tremendous um, highlight for our district. So we're very proud of him. Um, I know that you join me in prayer and remembrance of tomorrow. Um, I can't believe it's been 17 years. Um, I know that it's something that we all all remember um, so so tragically that um, you know I guess it just never leaves our mind and that the time just passes so quickly. Um, also, our deepest sympathy to the friends and family, including the Leesburg High School family and the tragic and sudden loss of former student Keyshawn Johnson this past weekend. Um, also, have one letter of condolence. This is to. Um, Latasha Owsley, she's a teacher at Gray Middle School who lost her son, Terry. So, and that's all I have. Thank you. Um, board members, I'm going to ask that we do an exception tonight to our public input portion. I know that uh, Jerry Himes is here from Eustis Little League. Um, him and I and Mr. Carr and several of our employees have met with him several times, and I believe he's got some parents here, um, two of which are not speaking but would like to um, have their support of the use of the Little League fields um, there in support of that. So Charles Michau and Rolando Rangel are both in support of that. Jerry, I'm going to allow you to come up and speak and your other participants to come up and speak. This is not something that we generally do, just so you know, for the public, public input portion. I know that you are here with a message. Um, you have three minutes. Each of you will get three minutes. Thank you, board. Thank you for this. I'm just in transparency. I think there'll be some discussion to follow. So, Mr. Himes. Uh, Jerry Himes, Eustis Little League. Ms. Loop, thank you. Board members, public, I appreciate your time. <clears throat> I just would like to address the use of the fields at 450 Golf Links that the Eustis Little League has used for better part of 57 years. I don't know about all of it, but a lot of it has been played there. And um, as Ms. Cornegay has said, we love children there as much as any school teacher or parent does. Um, we've had an issue back and forth here the last several months about maintaining fields uh, according to a lease. And I just want to let you know that we are wanting to continue to do such, um, 
we feel that just the with the Hurricane Irma last year had destroyed several of our buildings, took out a, a, a part of our field on our junior field. And being that we are an all volunteer organization, our funds are not funded from the school board or anybody in the public, it is from volunteers and parents to, that care. And so we would like to find a way to make sure we can use those fields going forward. I know you have other plans for some of those fields I do believe there's enough property located between the school board's property there at Eustis Heights and the backside of the high school and junior fields there <clears throat> that we could come up with some kind of resolution between the city, the county, the school board to make it so that this, the kids of Eustis have somewhere to play locally instead of having to travel six to ten miles to do so. That being said, we're the only Little League left in Northern Lake County, and we'd like to maintain it. There's a difference in opinion on how Little League operates and how other rec ball operates, and that we think that we should do it as for family. It's all about family, it's about the kids. If the kids can't afford it, we'll provide. We make sure we can. So if there's any, any way that we could get with you all here in the very near future to work out some kind of plan, the use of Little League would appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Frederick Davis. Good evening, everybody. Uh, Frederick Davis, um, I'm new to this, these meetings, first school board meeting ever. As a young father um, of two daughters, I have one who's five, just started kindergarten at Eustis Heights. Um, for two seasons, she's been playing with Eustis Little League. Um, as a new board member there for about six months, I kind of walked into not knowing what I was getting into, but uh, you know, wanted to come out and show my support. Um, as a kid, I played Little, uh, little League. <coughs> play different sports. I know how fond my memories of those were. I want to try to keep those around for my daughters and other future children in the area. Um, whatever it takes, I know Jerry said we're all volunteer. Uh, I know myself personally and a few of these parents back here are about the only ones that show up to do the, the maintenance and the work and anything that needs done. We have all these people there, but when it's crunch time, this is what shows up. So uh, I understand there was some problems with the maintenance and whatnot, but you see how limited we are as far as our help to try to get everything done. But uh, I just wanted to be here to, to you know, let you guys know that we are concerned as parents and as the Little League, and we're willing to do whatever we can to keep those fields operable for the children for the future. Thank you. Thank you very much. Amber Michaud. Just like Fred said, for school board meeting, I just came out in support of my six-year-old. He's played four seasons there. Um, it, it impacted and it changed his life. It's impacted his behavior. He's even said, like, it's a family thing. We go to practices. We go to games. We have two daughters that are following in his footsteps. Our four-year-old wants to follow right behind him and play at Eustis. It's a family-oriented, caring league. Like Jerry said, if children can't pay, they work it out. I firsthand experienced that. Like Fred said, there's not many maintenance people. I mean, we have went out the first day before season started every year. We've all taken care of it. You know, we're doing our best. My husband and I both work full-time jobs. We devote what we can. I just wanted to, you know, be in support and say that it's a great place for children around here. Babe Ruth is just totally different. It doesn't work like that at Eustis. We kind of, you know, the, it's just with the little kids, certain things happen. With the older kids, certain things happen. It's just a great place. And we don't want to be limited to just the one field because we have so many t-ball players this year. If we get taken down, we're not going to have enough space or area for those children to play. We want to keep our fields. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Board members, I'll go ahead and just fill you in that um, your, the district team has been working with Mr. Himes on this, this issue. 
Um, the lease has been here forever. The conditions of the lease are that the Eustace Little League maintain the fields, and we give them the fields, the fields for free, basically. And last year, after Hurricane Irma, we started receiving phone calls about the condition of the field and the quality of the fields and how they weren't being maintained, which obviously then comes back to us because it's our property, but it's been their responsibility to maintain it. So we've had lots of discussions with the city of Eustace as well. Um, they sat in on meetings with us with our maintenance department to try to work this out because if we're going to have this good faith contract that's written that says that maintenance is their responsibility, that they can use the fields, but it's not being kept. And so we, we are hearing from this parents, it's just like PTO at schools, there's very limited resources that help to maintain those fields. But at the same time, we don't have dollars to put into fields to make them work. We are not in the service of little league fields or ball fields or soccer fields or anything of that nature. So the city manager of Eustis met with us actually this summer as well. He offered up two additional fields for the program. Mr. Carr and Mr. Ritter, I will tell you, Mr. Ritter has worked tirelessly to try to work something out. We even spoke about if we saw a change or a condition that we would consider releasing the property and it took a while to even get a response from that side of the house. So there's been some concerns on both sides. Um, we have reached an agreement. We are letting them use the fields. Uh, it's my understanding that Mr. Rogers went out and the field, Mr. Rogers went out and mowed it, put up the mm -hmm. pest control, put in the maintenance for it so that they could be prepped and ready to go this Saturday. We got an insurance certificate on Friday getting Mr. Carr's. There's been lots of emails that this has been a long, an ongoing conversation. Um, so we will continue to have discussions with them, I'm, I'm certain. I just didn't want you guys to think this is new. This is something that the district has been working on with this individual. Mm -hmm. Mr. Matthias. This actually has been going on since I came on board six years ago. Oh, good to know. In a conversation about the maintenance of the fields, I've been by several times. That I know that one time, uh, probably three years ago, the city of Eustace and or the county commission, both were willing to step up to the plate. You guys may want to reach out to them. Um, and. And the um, what where the wheel ran off is is they wanted us to give them certain rights, and I don't remember exactly what happened, but but in both cases where the city of Eustis and the county came together, because there's nothing more important than preserving those fields, in my opinion. And so, um, and God bless you guys for coming out, because that's pretty typical. Just for the record, when my boys played there ball, there was like six of us that showed up. <laughs> so same same uh, today, but. But I think that if we explore with the county commission and with um, the city of Eustis, mm -hmm. that they may be willing to help you, and, and we can, um, to whatever degree, help facilitate that. They've been working on it. The staff's been working on it very diligently, yeah. above and beyond. Hmm? With the county, too? No, not the county, but the city. The city of Eustis oh. has sat at the table as well. well. I think that if you reach out to um, Leslie Campion, mm -hmm. Not, not us. If you <laughs> I was say. <laughs> she, she's an amazing advocate for you guys, and um, and I think that you might be able to get some help because uh, they've got resources that obviously we don't. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know that the agreement I haven't I have a uh, football field that's run by the Knights. It's in actually your district. Um, they they don't pay any rent, but they maintain it to the T. And so that's kind of the key is that when people drive by. Um, Y'all didn't get here in time to hear the fellow that was saying he had no kids. So those people drive by and they go, well, the field's a mess and, and it looks like an eyesore. Those are the calls that we get. So I know you guys get it. Um, and, and I empathize with where you are and I know that y'all do with us. So. Yeah, ongoing. Mr. Campbell? I would just like to say I, I know where you're at. Uh, when I would go before city council here at Tavares, when I coached for 15 years, I was by myself. And, and I was there for the kids, not myself. So uh, I feel for you. But I was a little concerned about some things that I had heard. And well, first of all, uh, saw in the paper where it had been talked about that we had turned them down and I didn't know it had came to us. So I asked the superintendent and, and to uh, somebody else and they said, no, it hasn't came to you yet as far as that. So I just wanted that clarified that it hadn't came to us on that part, but uh, as far as the board, but uh, I'm for trying to help out what we can because if we keep our youth involved in after school athletics and projects, things that will keep their mind going and keep them out of trouble is what we're, we're there for, is to try to help any way we can. But what I was confused about was what I heard that we were doing an expansion and doing a, uh, uh, trying to do something with our bus lots and things and that I had not been privy to. 
So that was, that kind of caught me off guard. That this was some of the, the talk about taking up some of the property that was there to use for that. So that kind of caught me off guard on that. So, uh, but uh, you know, I'm I'm all for youth, and I look forward. And I was very frustrated this year at the World Series because my cape, my my satellite dish went out, and I was not able to see the Little League Championship, and I was very disappointed because I look forward to that every year. And uh, so, you know, I, I will tell you also, you may want to check with the catcher for the Oakland Athletics. He played at Eustis Little League. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you, guys. Is this something we're bringing up later? Um, no, it's not something that was that, that was coming up towards for us to discuss for later. Um, it definitely can be. I'm. I think I need you guys to be clear. I'm just going to play bad cop here. I have no problem doing that. That the there there's dollars that need to be invested in these fields. Bottom line, I think none of them would 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 disagree. And so where the conflict comes in is they come. To, it's our property, so it's our dollars. But in the lease agreement, it says we are letting you use the fields. You maintain them. And I think everybody sitting at this board can look them squarely in the face and tell them that we are spending every taxpayer dollar we receive already. We don't have additional dollars to support a Little League program. And that's, I think, where we've gotten a little bit sideways because parents call and the newspaper says, oh, the school board's not supporting a Little League program. But it's not our job to support a Little League program financially. Unfortunately, you guys know up here, and I don't, you guys don't know, my kids play ball. My kids have come up through the Babe Ruth program in Umatilla. I get it. We get it. Nobody here is against that. We are all for working with you and seeing how we can progress that forward. We just don't have dollars to contribute to maintenance of fields. Okay. Well, I mean, for me, my, my brother, my family lives a mile from those fields, and uh, my brother walked there every single day from fifth grade until he went to college for ball. So I understand really clearly how ball can, um, can amazingly change a kid's life. But where does it stop? So that's the problem. So like if we're, and I love those fields. I, I, I can't tell you how many suicides I made. Um, and the drinks. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea like in boys' hearts. <laughs> the drinks the where you add oh, one of every flavor. Uh, Sorry. Are we talking about suicide squeeze play? No. I did too. I was thinking ball plays, just so you know. I'm, I didn't know you I played ball, Dr. Burns. I a lot of, of sodas. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and so I get, I get the fields, I get, I, I get it. Um, but you know, in the same way, we can't afford to do every little league. We can't afford to do the swimming complex in Leesburg or a dance program somewhere else. You know, like we just don't have the funds to do everything. So um, we have to focus on our schools, which are hurting too. Like we don't have pools in our own schools. So I and think those are PE standards swimming, by the way. Right, that, it, is, it is a PE standard. Yes. Yes. So I think that um, from this point, the discussion is to use those additional fields to, to be able to have access to those additional fields. And so, so Mr. Carr is aware of that, and so is his staff, and we'll just let them continue to work through this if that's okay with the will of the board um, on how they're going to work that out. If you want to come up to the microphone, Mr. Mr. Himes, thank you. I'm, I apologize. Mm -hmm have a company that is willing to cut all of our fields for us okay. and help us maintain them. Okay. Uh, we had a company last year, but they failed us when we needed them most. Right. So volunteers, here we come, you know. But we have a company that has, is willing to step up and help us cut all the fields, even the ones that are not looking good. And we'll get them up to looking like they should be, like opening day. So. And I would like to ask, have you guys um, worked with the City of Eustis with the demolition of the other bleachers yet? I, I no, I, I will talk to Mr. Nybert. I don't, he hasn't said anything. Okay. Um, I know we discussed that, and that's something they yeah. were willing to do. And I don't, know, I don't know who the doctor was that built those 40-some years ago. I wasn't here. Right. But, okay. All right. Thank you. We'll, are the we'll boys, talk. are the older boys, you do you have older boys still? Concrete. Are they helping maintain the fields? Thank you, Dan. Well, I don't have anybody from 13 up right now. Uh, I did have Coach Billings and eight of his student, eight of his players come out Friday night to help us. Right. So when we reach out to the community, we have we have got a good response. Good. You know, it's just that um, 
it, as we go forward, if we could work out something a little bit longer than one year, I could probably get some corporate investment to help with new lighting and stuff, which would help everything on the property. Okay. So thank you. And I you appreciate all of your help. And thank you very much. Let, okay. Thank you, Mr. Himes, very much. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, board members, for allowing that opportunity for them to speak to. So now we're on board member comments. Mr. Mathias, start us off. I want to start with a, a comment that as I walked in a few minutes late, and the gentleman was speaking about uh, the 0.75 <laughs> and, and his taxes, that I will tell you that some years ago, and he comes from the villages, that I sat with uh, Mr. Gary Morris. And Mr. Morris, um, one of the attractions to come into the villages, they had village dollars, and that you could eat basically like you used to be able to in Vegas for a buck, um, a full meal, prime rib dinner. And the attraction was bring food, then you bring the people, then you sell them a lot, and then a home, that whole marketing plan. Literally, literally, the expansion of the villages came to a stop because they couldn't recruit and retain young people to be servers and cooks and uh, hospitality side. And so the village's charter school was born. And it was born because, and people today, if you go there, it now recruits doctors and attorneys and all of those people that are ancil ancillary to support the retirement community. And um, so that education component and what we bring is to you, Dr. Tibbetts, that not only is there an obligation to that next generation, but also they genuinely bring the parents of those people that, that are so desperately needed to serve the retirement community. So we're all in this together. That's my point about that. The other, other is, is I'm extremely proud of the fact that our citizens came together and that we own the issue of safety and security, and most important, the mental health component, that we will get ahead of this issue. And one day we won't be talking about guardians and guns, that we'll be talking about safe schools because our kids are genuinely safe. And so for that, I am proud. I'm proud the election's over. It was exhausting. And, and I'm very grateful to the voters who reelected me and we can move on. And it's funny because you kind of almost decompress. This election was different than any other I've been through. And I think maybe because it's my last and, uh, and the other is, is it was just different. That's all. And so it's taken me about a week and a half to decompress from it because I still go to the, look at Facebook, see what they're, they're saying about me. <laughs> and now nobody is. <laughs> so that's different. Anyway, I'm very grateful to have the opportunity to serve. I'm gra very grateful to, for the opportunity to serve on this board and to this superintendent and, and to the administration that is amazing and to all of our teachers and most importantly, our kids. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mathias, and congratulations. And to you. Dr. Burns. Congratulations to you both. Thank you. So and to Mark. Like, nobody, everybody leave Mark out. It's almost like he didn't win. <laughs> so he like won the, the super win. <laughs> um, I actually do a daily mindfulness practice, and, it, and I rarely ever bring this up, but this one ended with a quote that I thought was, I thought was so um, appropriate. Um, it was from Confucius, and he's, uh, 20, I had to Google it. Confucius was 2,500 years ago. Um, it says, I see, I hear, sorry, I hear and I forget. I see and I remember. I do and I understand. Lake County is working on authentic learning, and I thought when I saw that I couldn't think of a better quote than that one to um, define authentic learning. Um, and it also shows that authentic learning has been going on for 2,500 years. This isn't new, and that's a wonderful thing. This is, a, we're bringing some realness into our educational classes. And you saw the Treadway Elementary stuff, and I was gonna explain it, and Dr. Long, um, but I didn't know that Sherry had done such an amazing um, presentation of it. Um, but Dr. Long, I got the privilege of seeing, and um, Dr. Smith, and there was, a, I don't know the name of the, the third scientist, and they were really remarkable. It was remarkable to watch that and see the children really understand what they were doing. They were really actually <laughs> taking accurate scientific data, um, and they were engaged, they were involved. Um, it was real, authentic learning, and um, I was I was impressed. Like I, I as Miss Luke mentioned, I learned something I didn't I didn't know that stuff about contrails before, and um, I just couldn't have seen a better example of authentic learning, where these children were both doing and understanding. It was really remarkable. 
Um, I wanted to say thank you to the voters who approved the referendum. I sincerely appreciate your support for the children of Lake County. We, as a board, will be very fiscally responsible with your tax dollars. Thank you for keeping our children safe. Additionally, thank you to the donors to the PAC, which allowed for the advertising dollars so that we could um, reach, reach the voters and educate them on the issues. Um, I wanted to bring up something that we might consider. Now, since we have approved the Social Sentinel program, it was brought up to me that it would be nice if we had, and I think it would fit into HOPE, because I looked at the HOPE standards, um, some sort of, some sort of uh, social media education, things that cover some, you know, some what's appropriate, what's inappropriate. Sexting's not appropriate, you know. Um, you can't talk about bombs, you know, the things that Social Sentinel might pick up um, and a kid, if we educate them in advance, not to warn them, but to educate them, this is not appropriate because we don't want any of our kids sexting. <laughs> so um, I, I think that might be something we need to look at. And I think, I think it would fit right into the HOPE curriculum. I, I know for a fact that the middle schools, that the Attorney General requires them to talk about cyberbullying and sexting. Oh, good. Um, I meant to bring up cyberbullying. My head got up. So our middle schoolers get that. I know That's for, good. I know for sure. Good. Um, oh, and I just wanted to say, the way you guys handled attendance week, I thought was really cool. It looked fun. Um, kids love, like, who doesn't want to dress up like a superhero? And that makes kids want to go to school. Like, that was a really great way to handle it. That's all I have. Great. Thank you, Dr. Burns. It was fun in that classroom on Friday. Mr. Dodd. Well, I'm, I'm feeling the Stephanie Luke syndrome here of, you know, the longer you are or the lower you are in the order to give your board member comments, uh, you find that... Uh, Nothing left to say. <laughs> well, there's, there are still things left to say. But, uh, but some of the items have, have been said and... and but. Even though they've been said, my, my heartfelt thanks still goes out to the voters that, that got behind the referendum uh, to support school safety because, boy, I tell you, I, I walked through in my mind a few different scenarios of figuring out how would we uh, be able to fund some of these initiatives without the property tax referendum passing. And I just, I just couldn't imagine how many things I thought through in my mind that we'd have to just cross out of the budget that are just critical services for our children. Uh, and w when it comes to them, uh, particularly their safety. It, it's just an area that we cannot afford to compromise. Um, and as, as I was thinking about uh, also going back to our budget hearing tonight and thinking about some folks who came forward um, concerned about paying school taxes even though they have no children in school, well that got me really grateful for uh, those who paid taxes for me to go to school, right? Um, there are just some services that the government provides that are just cost prohibitive for only the people who partake in those services to pay for them. You know, I mean, if we take that $615 million and divide that by our 42,000 students, we find that each kid's paying $14,000 a year to go to school. And that, that obviously is, is just not doable, <laughs> particularly in families such as mine where you have more than one kid. <laughs> um, and, and I think about how many roads in this county that we fund that I'm never going to drive or um, how many uh, fire police services that I have not had to use, but, but still I, you know, my tax dollars pay for those things and, and schools are just one of those things that, boy, if you're not willing to put your money um, forward to our children and the next generation, I just have trouble figuring out what is a more appropriate use of it. Um, that being said, uh, for those of you that care passionately about this generation, uh, just from some of the uh, highlights I've seen and, and bits of contact I've had from, from parents uh, and, and the number of call-outs I've heard about late buses, uh, I know that we are actively looking for bus drivers, and, um, and I'll, I'll put that plug out there. And, and uh, echoing uh, Kim Cronin's uh, remarks about how great the contract is now and how overwhelmingly supported it was, uh, hopefully there is a greater incentive now uh, as we leverage ourselves to be more uh, competitive in the bus driver world. Uh, there is, a, I know it's a calling, but a calling that hopefully is uh, hitting somebody's ears that happens to be listening. Uh, our students could, could really use a nice friendly face to help them get to school. So, uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dodd. Mr. Campbell. Just a couple things. Uh, Saturday I attended the Special Olympics at uh, 
here in Tavares, and, and I was very amazed with uh, what I saw in, in participation there. There was two different groups there that participated at two different times, and uh, and 99% uh, of them probably could outbowl me. And uh, and they were just, I mean, I saw so many kids getting strikes one after another. What amazed me was was this one young man that took and he let the ball go, and it was like in slow motion going down the lane, and all of a sudden it hit that one pin, and there went a strike. And I'm like, and here I'm worried about knocking them through the wall, and here he is barely touching them. But it was, it was great to be able to be there and attend that. Uh, this coming Wednesday I'll be reading at Rhymes, uh, and uh, they'll see how good or how bad of a reader I am. Also, uh, one of the things that I know has already been asked uh, by me or actually to me, uh, is when will we see our back pay and when will we see our, our change in pay? Uh, when will it be on our check and all? And, and we've been told this, that, and the other. I said, well, I'll check on it and they can get on down the road with that. But one of the great things I think, and Ms. Cronin brought this up about the negotiation process and how they felt very, very good about the process and, and, and the team that was facing them from our side and, and that they were not feeling threatened or anything. And, and I, my hat's off to you, Mr. Farnsworth, on that. Great job. And uh, also, uh, I have down here about contract, and I'm trying to remember what I wrote contract about. But uh, going forward next year into the contract season, oh, I know what it was about Mr. Farnsworth. All right. Now, the last thing I have is uh, Jim Roy has brought on board uh, a former Lake County deputy, Mark Palmer, to help him with the safety of our schools. And uh, I appreciate this, and he's a, a veteran of Lake County, uh, served on our Sheriff's Department here, and I think when he retired, he was a major. So uh, we're glad to have him aboard, and thank you. The time didn't even go off, Mr. Gamble. <laughs> um, I also just want to express my gratitude about the tax referendum. Board members, I'll let you know that when we were speaking about the use of those dollars and, and some things, we'll be bringing those forward in the in the weeks to come about how we're going to spend those. But we are super thankful to the public uh, for supporting that initiative. And I think Mr. Matthias was speaking about the weirdness of this election. And I will tell you one of the biggest um, components for me was on the campaign trail four years later. It was a very positive experience. Everywhere we went, we were welcomed. The, spe the speaking engagements that we went to, there wasn't opposition. There was not negativity. There was not... Um, just it was a different environment four years later. You were in the same place as I was. And <laughs> what I think it respect, reflects on and speaks to is the new administration. So it made this election process go much easier for me. The headway that you all have made in the trust in the public, which when we're out campaigning, trust in, in the, the school system was a big deal four years ago. Um, and I think the conversation was very different four years later. And that speaks volumes. And I appreciate you making that a little bit easier on me. Um, and my family appreciates that. So um, thank you to the voters. Obviously, it, a 78% margin of victory was very humbling. Uh, when the newspaper called and said, what are your thoughts on that? I, it was more of a, well, I think it, it speaks to what we've got going in Lake County Schools as a destination district. So I really mean that from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for your negotiation work. Thank you for your negotiation work to both of our leaders. Um, and I look forward to the next four years as well. So without repeating everything all of you said, we will adjourn this evening. Thank you.